and we will be going live in five, four, three, two, we're live. Good morning, Owasso. This is the Twins with Owasso Live, and this is the Morning Loop. It is currently 8 a.m. like normal. It is 76 degrees outside with a high of 92 today, so it's going to be warm. It's going to be nice, and some of us uh, work in corporate. We kind of have the day off. Obviously, we're not taking the day off because we got other things to do. We'll utilize this and make uh, today as effective as, and as productive as a day as we possibly can, but... For those of you who have the day off, enjoy your time with family. Enjoy some time outside. It's going to be a good day for spending out time outside, maybe going to the pool. Just do something fun outdoorsy. That'd be good. I guess you could go to a movie, too. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, with uh, that being said, uh, traffic conditions are really fair going into Tulsa. I would imagine a lot of corporate offices are closed down, so I don't really think you have too much of an issue. So, if anybody's going in, they're probably going in to maybe do some shopping or something i know it's because it's juneteenth uh so i guess it's a relatively new federally Man celebrated Man holiday Man, yeah. so which for those of you who don't know juneteenth is the day that the last slaves were notified that they were free in, in like galveston, galveston texas. texas galveston texas yep anywho uh but yeah we're gonna push on to really really important news uh more cultural related news so as we talked about in a previous video that girl that posted that meme, or not a meme, she posted a, a a TikTok of her exposing that Biden or somebody within the Biden administration is sending posters down to illegal immigrants down at the Mexican border going, remember when you get to America to vote for Biden. And a lot of people were like, she's faking that, that's not real, that's not real. Well... It seems like it is going to be real because Biden is going to give amnesty to half a million migrants. Uh, migrants, sir, Ill, excuse me, illegal aliens. He's going to give amnesty to them. He's going to give them pathway to citizenship. So there you go. We have wherever these people end up, that's 500,000 new voters for the Democratic Party. They've been primed and re and re they're ready to vote for Biden. They're not going to vote for, I mean, 500,000 people that we know of. These are the ones he says that he's going to. Like, I mean, like the, the other several million that have come over the last couple of years, do you think they're going to vote for someone who's going to try to kick them out? They are replacing, they're, they're allowing non-citizens to vote against you. They're allowing people to vote against your best interests. And they're gonna, and they're selling this as this is a good thing. This is look how awesome and wonderful Biden is for allowing these people to stay. You know, this is what happens whenever you have idiots like AOC and all the squad that are in the Congress right now going, "Hey, hey, there's no such thing as an illegal alien. They're all they're all fleeing some type of persecution. Half a million, uh, half a million people are not fleeing persecution." These are economic migrants coming here to benefit off of our robust welfare systems. Welfare systems that will not work or not be able to function with this many influx of people coming in. I mean, these people are staying in what we showed the videos a while back about them staying in five-star hotels. Uh -huh. Getting $10,000 debit cards with our taxpayer funds put on there. This is ridiculous. This is not, this is wrong in every sense of the word. They're importing their next voter base. This is what Democrats have always done. But now it's just so blatant. And we have the resources to expose it, but every time someone exposes it, they're called a nut job for it. That poor girl, I mean, everybody in her comments, the girl that showed the, these are flyers down in, uh, Mexico and they're being handed to the caravans going remember to vote for Biden they go you're lying that's made up that's fake that's not real citizens only citizens can vote illegal immigrants can't vote mm -hmm. illegal aliens can't vote well guess what Andy's going to give them the a pathway to citizenship they're going to be getting they I mean they're, what, what are they talking about at all those they're talking about the Timcast they're saying that uh, they're handing out voter registration to people signing up for these cards now that is correct they, they go, are, and there's a bunch of people who have no uh, 
IDs that are signing up to vote or registering yeah. to vote. At like 300,000 per day in Texas or something like that, right? Yeah. And everyone's like, it's them cleaning the voter rolls. Well, that doesn't make any sense. How could you not have a social security number or not know your birthday and sign up to vote? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So it's scary times, man. Scary times. And again, if anything, if they're going to steal the election, this is how it's going to be done this time. If the election was held today and Trump was being voted in, he would win. 100%, no questions asked. But they have a few more months to allow some more, several hundred thousand illegal immigrants in, allow amnesty, allow pathways to citizenship for them, 500,000 new voters. I mean, that's definitely enough to swing a state like Texas. That's definitely enough to swing a state like Arizona. It's definitely enough to swing all the southern states. Election security should should be the primary goal, but it's not going to be the primary goal under the Biden administration. It's something the Republicans will have to do, and then Democrats will undo it all again or find new loopholes or new ways to import their next voter base. So, scary stuff, man. Mm-hmm. It most certainly is. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't even know what else to say about it. I mean, it's, it's, it's enough to make anyone angry. It's enough to make anybody mad. It's enough to drive a person insane. And then all the fact that we've talked about it so many times on the show before is all the little minute details that it's costing increasing and in increased living for regular Americans mm -hmm. that no one knows. Like with us just talking about the insurance stuff, like I said, they're driving around uninsured. So if they hit you, they're not paying for your insurance. Cops don't arrest people for not driving around uninsured anymore. Like the only thing they can really do is impound, is the, impound the vehicle, and that's very rare anymore <laughs> yeah i mean even if they impound the car they're just going to pull their money with the family group that they're living with and then buy another car yeah not get insurance on it and hit you again yeah or hit somebody that's in the same book of business as you or just overall i mean insurance rates overall in the state of oklahoma are up because of that and everyone's like you know when i when i tell people to sign up for like uninsured motorist i'm like you know you're insuring medical damage on yourself against the 40% of drivers in the state are driving around uninsured. Yep. And, you know, I think the number is probably higher than that because you also just have bad people in the state. I mean, and I say bad people. You have people who are unfortunately dealing with the cost of more expensive living. Uh, you're They're dealing with inflation, so what are you going to do? It's like, I guarantee you, if you have to choose between paying your insurance dues and, and paying for food to put food on your table for your family, you're going to choose food over insurance every day of the week. 100%. 100%. So, and what, you're going to have the police prosecute people for not carrying insurance because they didn't have enough money to pay for insurance because they didn't have enough money to put food on the table for their family? Like That will not fly with the regular standard people out there. Yeah. I mean, it... it <sighs> We're either a nation of laws and we're a nation that has borders or we're not, period. So we have to stop what's happening at the border. We have to get Biden out of office and stop him from allowing people to just walk across the border and say, I'm a citizen now. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's disgusting, and it's wrong on every, in every sense of what this country stands for. You know, it's not like, you know, everyone's like, I was listening to what them talk on the Timcast today, and Ian was like going, well, I mean, they were all colonizers and settlers. It's like, no, they came here, took a risk, started their own, built their own homes, started farming. Like, there was no capitalism. There was no trade. There was no barter system. It was just, hey, this is a territory annexed by the British colonies. Go settle it. And that's what they did. You know, sure they had to, they had the encounters with the Indians. Some of the tribes worked out with them. Some of the tribes didn't. Yeah. They had to defend themselves. You know, it was conquest. Conquest was the way until capitalism was invented. And then it was the barter system. It was like, hey, you want something cool? I want something cool. Sell your land to us and we'll give you that. Mm -hmm. Or sign this contract and we'll give you this and whatnot. Sure, there were lots of contracts broken, but they were broken by both sides. Don't just think that. The Native Americans were 100% innocent in all their dealings. You know, you can argue that maybe they didn't understand it, but like I said, that's what happens when you have co different cultures clash. You know, it's like, 
our understanding of this word and your understanding of this word is two different things. Yeah, and also it's like the whole like it's like when you learn why the Trail of Tears like really happened, you know, like the Trail of Tears was a bad event, but you didn't realize that in the War of 1812, the Indian the Native Americans sided with the, the British yeah. to get their land back and <laughs> This is the only thing since we still didn't really have capitalism at this point yet. It was like, oh, well, we're going to punish you by getting, getting you, you off here. your land. Yeah. It's like, oh, they didn't do nothing. You know, it's like, uh, well, you sided with the British. So if you thought you were going to stay, you're wrong. So, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot to it, man. Yeah, but yeah, legal immigration. Yeah, you know, you. Those welfare the, the point is those welfare systems didn't exist when the colonists moved here. Yeah. They were on their own. Yeah, you came here and you were either you either make it you either make it or break it and go back home. Yeah. There was no in between. So there were no welfare, you know. It, it was whenever like yeah, I'm all for open borders if we didn't have a welfare system. But since we have a welfare system, you don't get open borders because I'm paying taxes and I ain't paying for 500,000 new people coming in and getting a $10,000 debit card to spend in the economy. Screw mm -hmm. that. And get put up in luxury hotels. Mm -mm. Screw that. On my, on our tax paradigm? Uh-uh. No way. Ugh. Yeah, this stuff pisses me off. But, uh, yeah, no, we'll have to... Let's push on to the next subject. We'll move on to the... Uh, uh, yeah, the California. Yeah, go ahead and read that. All right. So this... Talk. We always keep talking about how they're coming for no, your children. Yeah, they're coming for your children, and watch out what your public schools are doing with your kids. So, California Senate bans schools from notifying parents if their child changes their gender, which is the biggest fear that we've all had for a long time: is schools keeping secrets from you about your children yeah how much you want to bet there are people applauding in that picture as soon as they sign that bill there are people going yay progressivism we did it we're so wonderful i feel like such a, a much better person now that i've i've, I've done this I'm, I'm a part of something great protecting kids from their bigoted parents disgusting man like that's wrong you're going to see some Terrible things come of this. A, you're going to see the suicide rate skyrocket in households. You're going to destroy families. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say about this. I mean, the fact that they're, they're, that this is such a big enough subject to be talked about, that they're passing this as a bill, that, that goes to show you how many kids in California have been indoctrinated by this trans ideology. That's scary. But they're passing this bill to virtue signal and feel better about themselves. Yeah. The old, we know better than the parents. Mm hmm You know? Mm-hmm. It's like, those are not your children. Those are the parents' children. They live in their house. They have to live by their rules. Yeah. There is no... Oh, only listen to your parents for what you want to listen to. That's literally what the school board and all these people who are advocate for this are telling you you don't have to listen to your parents i said yeah you have to listen to your parents until you move out of their house yeah yeah i mean that's true i mean you're gonna see a lot of scary stuff you're gonna see parents coming out like wrath of the almighty old testament style stuff and i know people are like oh that's a threat the unit is like no like you are taking their kids away from them you're doing things that you're you're you think you know better than them you're trying to have the secret relationship with this kid that is not yours. I mean, you're a predator. The parent doesn't want anything from their child. Like, again, this is what I, I've had this conversation with Chad. Like, the only people that you can trust are people that don't want anything from you. That's family. Now, there are certain bad actors in families, for sure. But the family doesn't want anything from you. Like, if you're in a relationship, a girl wants something from you. Whether it be your resources, your time, your energy. Like... Your family doesn't want any of that. They want you to be successful. They want you to have a good life. So these people want something from you. You're the product. Your kid is the product. And again, that's why a lot of these people are predators. These people that think that they're that are, are in this passing this bill, they're predators. They're like, hey, 
we know better for your kid than you do. It's like, but they want something. They could be somebody that wants to pursue a gross relationship with your kid. I mean, they already have a gross relationship if they're trying to convince your kid that uh, they're something they're not. So I, I don't know. This is wrong. I mean, and you're going to see parents coming out of the woodwork trying to stop this. And it will get, and I, I tell you, I don't want it to get violent, but it will get violent. I mean, you'll see things like, if you can pull up the last two videos I sent you, Chad. The uh, last two? Yeah. Do the one of that mom. This one right here? Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Not that one. The, the one I just sent you. This one? Nope. Nope, the very last one. I don't even think you pulled them up yet in this thing. Like, they're still in the... I, you, this is, if this is the one you just sent to me, you hadn't pulled it up yet. Yeah, yeah, you have not pulled them up yet. Okay, give me a second. All right. This one. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Hang on. And yeah, this is the one that has music, so I'm not going to... Unmute it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And... Play. But yeah, that lady right there, this stuff like this will happen if, you know, with this bill being passed in uh, California. Like that woman right there, her kid was uh, kidnapped and assaulted and murdered by somebody. Now, that was, this was in Germany. This was a while ago. Obviously, it's in black and white. But uh, she got revenge. You're going to see parents coming back after people who are bad faith actors who are telling them that they love their kids more than their parents do. Because their kids are going to turn into something like this is why, again, you have to be super involved in your kid's life. You have to know what the, you have to know what your kids are consuming. You have to know what their friends and their friends group are consuming, what kind of people you surround your kids with. And if your kids are in public school, you got to you got to have that sit down at the dinner table with them. And be like, hey, do your teachers what did you learn today? Did your teachers teach you something stupid? You have to know if they're teaching you critical Father, race theory. The you have to teach. You have, you have to know if they're going to teach them not just critical race theory, but this gender stuff. You have to know if they're part of some. They have these secret. Now they have these secret uh, gay clubs that they won't tell. Like they call it something that's totally benign and out there, but like they have these secret clubs for gay kids, and they go, "Your kids could be a part of that." So you have to be very careful to know what your kids are involved in. And like I said, when these kids, your kids are at school more than they're with you. So they're going to be a part of stuff that you're not going to be afraid to or they might not want to share with you. Especially now all these teachers going, we don't have to tell your parents. We don't have to tell, we don't have to tell them. It's not, it's not your parents' business. Uh, BS. BS, it's not your parents' business. So... Also, we kind of missed this, but again, something like this will happen too. You know, like uh, does this actually show this? I don't think so. I don't think even the the live thing showed it. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can let her rip, see what happens. To his son's kidnapper. While standing in the airport, wearing a disguise, Gary Plaché waited for Jeff Doucette to be escorted by. As Jeff approached him, Gary turned and fired. Jeff fell to the floor and Gary was restrained by officers. Jeff was taken to the hospital where he passed away the next day. After a trial, Gary was sentenced to seven years suspended sentence with five years of probation and 300 hours of community service. There was a lot of controversy around the sentencing as people believe he should have received more of a punishment. However, the no. verdict was final and Gary went on to live his life with people knowing that a father did the unthinkable on live TV. To yeah. So if it, that, again, that I should have posted that on Father's Day when we got back from a. But uh, yeah, that that guy. Again, that's that would be one of those situations where that guy right there, the guy that he that Gary Pluche shot. He helped that man get back on his feet. He gave him a place to stay. Helped him open up like a karate gym. Signed his own son up for that karate gym. So as a first customer, got a bunch of kids in the community to sign up. And as soon as he was able to, that guy was able to afford, he he, he let him stop staying at his house. And then he gave, helped him uh, get into an apartment. And then one day, the Gary that Gary guy comes home. His kid's missing. That fellow disappeared too. He uh, had a 
very inappropriate relationship with his son, kidnapped him for a long time. And then finally he came back and his dad lost years of his son's life and uh, stole his innocence, stole his innocence, stole his son's innocence. And he took revenge. That's the society I want to live in where they had that. Like, I mean, that guy was like going, people were upset that he didn't get a harsher sentence. It's like, I'm glad that that man didn't get a harsher sentence. I want to live in a society where people go, yep, no, I totally get, I, I understand. Now we live in a society going, throw the book at the dad and release the pedophile. That's what that's what kind of society we live in now. They'd be like, well, he's just a minor attracted person. That's not a big deal. It's like, no, I want to live in a society where dad can get revenge. And then everyone in that community would be like, yeah, judge, we can't. Uh, yeah, no, we can't send him to jail. He's too much of an awesome person. And we'd all we all understand why he did it. And we would do it, too. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of society you want to live in. Where people would go, yeah, no, you're not putting Gary in jail for that. Absolutely not. In fact, I, you know, I'd be a person to say like, 300 hours community service is too much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, with this trans ideology stuff, things like that are going to happen. You're going to have bad faith actors, maybe not to the extreme of this uh, Doucette guy that kidnapped his son, but that's basically what you're doing. You're, you're ideologically kidnapping these kids, taking them down a path they can never come back from. And people are applauding it in California, going, yay, we did it. We're so progressive. We're so tolerant. Yep. We are virtue signaling so hard. Yeah, and then speaking of, like, being school boards being able and school public schools being able to keep secrets is leads on to the next thing, which is a hospital in Texas being able, has been transing kids without, you know, parents' knowledge. Parental consent? Mm -hmm. Parents' wow. consent knowledge. They've been doing it. And this nurse here was a, was whistleblower. a whistleblower for yeah. it and the fbi decides to pay her a visit for telling the truth yeah the biden administration weaponizing the doj and the fbi against everyday people for doing the right thing it's like no we want more trans people in the biden administration you're the bad guy for whistleblowing and saying they're performing surgeries on minors and children and they're not alerting the parents Ready for me to play this? We are giving the medical field too much power. Mm -hmm. yeah. We definitely are. Are you ready for me to play yeah, this? Yeah, play it. All right. Hello? Hi. I'm looking for Vanessa Sivage. Okay. Yeah. Hello, are you? Okay. I'll make some of FBI Okay. This is a Okay. Shaking hands right. like it's um, normal freaking day. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Uh, just routine. Yeah, the FBI is visiting your house. It's not a normal day. Are we interrupting dinner? I'm really sorry. That's all right. What's going on? Um, let me start at the beginning. So I'm sure you're aware of some of the things that have been going on at your work lately. With regards to... Yeah, so I gotta. Can I? You, can we sit down for a minute? Let me do my song and dance. And that's it, because they go inside and uh, obviously don't have the ring footage anymore after that. So yeah. Do my ridiculous. song and dance. I'd be like, uh, "Do you have a warrant, sir?" Then piss off. I mean, that's how you have to deal with these feds. In fact. If an FBI agent shows up or a ATF agent shows up, there's a guy uh, did a thing where he was like, instead of answering the door, he said, there's a guy claiming to be a police officer outside my house, called the local police, and the local police showed up and gotten a huge, I mean, the, the, the federal agents were pissed, but, you know, the FBI agent's going, yeah, you know, you can't, you can't be bothering that. We don't have, we don't know who you, you are, who you say you are. And again, you as a citizen can't verify. It's like, just because they have a badge doesn't mean that they are... I mean, how many people can fake badges now? It's like, oh, I'm with the FBI. Okay, yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. It's like, sorry, I'm going to need your supervisor to come down here and confirm you are who you say you are. Mm -hmm. And even then, I wouldn't trust it. So, seriously, don't open your door for these guys. Or if you do, be like, well, I'm going to need you to sh bring a warrant or something. And if and not... Have somebody in the background going, yeah, there's guys claiming that they're FBI agents at my house. I don't know what they're here for. Could you send a police officer over here to handle this for me? Yeah, and absolutely. That's the best idea. Is like I remember someone doing like ATF was showing up to somebody's house, and mm -hmm. 
the home owner called the police on. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just talking yeah. about. And so it was the ATF then. Okay, yeah. But yeah, it's like, you don't know who these people are. They could not be telling the truth. Who knows? Yeah. He's like, I think this guy's just trying to get into my house and rob me. <laughs> but, I mean, the fact that that's what this is. I mean, it's literally them covering up. They're covering for the bad guys. Yeah, yeah. Transing kids in a hospital, in a children's hospital. This mm -hmm. is a children's hospital providing gender, what they call gender affirming care, mm -hmm. which as we all know is an unirreversible surgery that's going to either, if they do it as a minor, it's gonna stunt their growth permanently and they'll never be able to reproduce or have their own children ever again. And then not to mm -hmm. mention all the continued health problems that you're going to have for the rest of their life, like their bones are weaker and less dense than mm -hmm. everybody else. And it's not the, 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 one of the hormones that they take is literally proven that it's giving people cancer. Nice. Yeah. There you go, folks. I mean, again, and it's not going to change their mental state. The, the, the rate of suicidality in trans people who transition and people who don't transition stays virtually the same. And you have all these trans people going, no, uh, no, uh. It's like, okay, have you seen a 60, 70 year old trans person? I sure haven't. Have you seen a trans person make it to that long? They don't because of all the health risks that come with getting this surgery. Like I told you, less dense bones. They have problems. I mean, if you look at the people who have become detransitioners, it's like they have knee problems, they have back problems. They don't. They will hardly live past fifty. They're lucky to get to 40, 50 years old. Jesus. Oh my goodness. But yeah, what a crazy world we're living in today. But uh, yeah, I mean this this is wrong, and the FBI and the DOJ are complicit in this now. So we need to have the DOJ and the uh, FBI and all that stuff. We need them weaponized against the southern border. And against illegal, but what they need to be investigating is ballot harvesting. What they need to be investigating is these security of these voting machines. That's what needs to be done. But no, we're wasting time talking about investigating people for whistleblowing on trans hospitals, transitioning mm -hmm. kids. Yep. And investigating parents for showing up to PTA meetings and saying, why are you teaching my kids about critical race theory? Or why are you teaching my kids about trans ideology? Why are you teaching my kids about blow jobs at school why are you putting pornography in our schools yep and everyone's like that's not what they're doing you're just misrepresenting it's like well i don't know i mean the books are pretty graphic in nature and they talk about how homosexual men enjoy certain things yeah certain well, proclivities and exactly. positions and the best way i've ever heard it put too is like <laughs> if they weren't trying to indoctrinate children why don't they have a drag time story time for nursing homes because they don't care about old people yeah they're trying to get to the children they want to get old to people are gross children. and dried up we want the young fresh kids yeah it's like there is no there is no adult equivalent to what they do yeah that's a good uh, good point who'd you hear that from uh i forget what it was it was a it was a video that i saw a long time ago it okay was like, if you want to get me on your side you need to prove to me why there is no adult equivalent to everything that the that the trans and pride community are doing. Everything is marketed towards. I would love children. to see them do that in a nursing home. Get out of here, you weirdo! <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the main reason why. I, was like, so, yeah, I could just see the old grandma. Get out of here, you. <laughs> yeah, get out. <laughs> that would be awesome, man. Dude, I'd pay for that. I'd pay to see a uh, a drag time story hour for senior citizens, man. That's what I want. That's that is what we need right now. We need trans story hour for the uh, for elderly, the senior for, for the elderly, elderly homes. Put them in those homes, those hospice homes, where those people are like cranky and can't remember who they are, and be like, "Why are you here?" <laughs> What's on know, your head? I didn't know the circus was on top. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of clown are you? Oh my god! I mean, it's like kids and old people are the most brutally honest that mm -hmm. you can ever get, mm -hmm. and it's and it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. There's the, very little difference between children and adult and and old people. But kids, old people, they're virtually the same. 
virtually the same. They crap their pants. <laughs> <laughs> And they brutally, don't know where they are. And they're brutally honest and, with things. Like, do I have that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome, man. I, I love that. That I love it. Yeah, let's I am a, I'm a new advocate for trans or transgender story hour for the elderly. Let's go. For the see that. Let's make this happen. I want to see it. I want to record that. I want to see the reactions of all the old folks. I cannot wait. We're going to facilitate. We're going to make this happen. Wasso is going to make this happen. I'm going to force the city council to make this happen. <laughs> like, content, baby. Put that out there. So, so you've sent me these next couple, and I don't know which one you want me to do first. So which one do you want to do here? Uh, it doesn't matter. You just play one now. We're, right, just, just, we're just rolling now. All right, then I'll do this one of this lady here. Oh, goodness. There we go. Let me get rid of this. Where's my volume? Oh, I didn't hit the button. So that 24-year-old man can sleep with 14-year-old boys and not have to register as a sex offender because it's just not fair to the gays. I'm like, I'm, what? It's what? Like, I don't know if you saw that one. That was like, I think, early 2020 when they passed yeah. that law. Mm -hmm. And it's so I was like, if a 24-year-old man touches my 14-year-old son, oh. I, I will get a gun and yes. take matters into my own hands. Yes. Like, are you fucking kidding? Back to what we're we going to pass a law for about. LGBTQ mm -hmm. rights so that 24 year old oh, men can sleep reset. with 14 year old yeah. boys and yeah. not have to. So, there you go. I mean, that's Julian Michaels. She's like that fitness guru. I mean, she's been on the covers of magazines for years. Years. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, she's somebody who lives out in progressive California would be on their side if it if things didn't just go absolutely off the cliff over the rails like again they decri like they have in, in California they have decriminalized intentionally giving HIV and AIDS to people they've decriminalized a 24 year old man inappropriately touching 14 year old boys well because 14 year old boys who are gay just know they want to be gay and they want to already jump into that degenerate lifestyle of having relations with older men like what is wrong with you like how would you feel if it was a 14 year old girl wanting to have relations with a 24 year old guy i guarantee you you'd have very different opinions on it but that's all this is this is them trying to bring kids or younger and younger generations into a adult world that they are not prepared for 100 percent so, I mean, that's the whole purpose of, like, why lowering the voting age is really a bad idea and concept. Because if mm -hmm. you lower the voting age, what's the first thing kids are going to do? They're going to lower the drinking age. And mm -hmm. once kids lower the drinking age, what has that done? That's given predators access to younger kids that can go to bars Yeah, now. vote more rights to the kids so we can have more access to them so they'll vote them more rights. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, now the drinking age is 16. Perfect. Now there are 16-year-old kids at bars. Now more predators have more access to younger kids. And they'll never stop. It'll just they'll just keep going younger and younger and be like, well, fourteen year olds are really where it's at. Well, twelve year olds are really where it's at. They haven't really they're just at puberty age. You know what I mean? Like this is it's terrifying stuff. And again, younger generations are only gonna vote themselves more rights and more entitlements. Because mm -hmm. well, why wouldn't they be like a fourteen year old logic be like, why can't I just have a million dollars? And then, you know, Democrats are like, Yeah, why can't you just have a million dollars? Why can't we just you know, the minute somebody turns 14, we can kick them out of their parents' house and say that their their parents can't even help them make decisions anymore. Let's give them a, a $10,000 gift card and they can do whatever they want with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they're going to spend that real wisely, huh? Yep, 100%. We, we already do it for illegals. Why can't we do it for 14-year-olds that we're trying to get out of abusive, conservative households? All right, then we got this next one here, and uh, let me go ahead and play it. Or yeah, you... go ahead. All right, hang on one second. This Tuesday, a Florida judge struck down a 2023 law that would ban minors from receiving gender-affirming care. The law in question that was struck down by Judge Robert Hinkle barred minors from being prescribed puberty blockers and hormonal treatments, even with their parents' permission. In his ruling, the judge said that transgender people are constitutionally entitled to the treatment that they need and even quoted Martin Luther King comparing those who oppose his ruling 
to those who were once against equality for minorities and women. When progressives and leftists like that judge tell you that they're fighting for gender affirming care or treatment for transgender youths, this is what they are talking about. And they would have you believe that we, the conservatives, are the extreme ones for opposing it, that we are extreme for thinking children are perfect just the way they are without surgeries and without pharmaceutical intervention. In case you guys missed it, this Tuesday, a full repeat now. Yep. And there you go. Again, we're the monsters for saying, you know, you're made in God's image. You're the, you're the way you're supposed to be. And then they go, no, no. I mean, look, when we say you're made in God's image, I mean, you have a divine purpose. You are created in the eyes of the Lord. You are unique and special in the way the Lord needs you to be. That doesn't mean you can't self-improve. You know, it's like go to the gym. Work on your mental faculties. Become a stronger person mentally, physically, emotionally. Be the best version of yourself for as long as you can be. But guess what? They're going, no. If you if you need to, uh, if you don't feel like you're in the right body, just start lopping off parts. You'll be fine. And where are the monsters, man? We're telling them, no. You're 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 just fine the way you are. It's just it's it's wrong. It's disgusting. And that you know the left are the heroes and we are the villains for telling people no 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 no, you're fine. It's okay. Yeah. Said and not to mention, especially if you're getting back to the concept of children again, this is a life altering surgery. Yeah. That can't you can't you go back. Come back. Once yeah. you once, once you cut your this. once you cut your breast off. So once you cut your tallywhacker off. Guess what? They don't grow back. They don't grow back. It's and, not reversible. I mean, they. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've seen, like, hundreds of these activists like saying, "Oh, it's completely one hundred percent reversible." Like, it is. Not. Oh, they. To- yeah, it, that is. That's the worst part is that they can openly lie like that. Like, you can just go back to being a boy, because in their minds they go, they can just make a plastio appendage for you, or you can just get fake. And it's like, yeah, but the whole point is, you'll never be able to breastfeed again. You'll never be able to sire your own progeny. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. They are, you're making a decision that you can never come back from. Ever. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, do you want to have a family? Tough. Do you want to breastfeed your own kids? Tough. They've ruined it. And they don't care. They don't care because they're so blinded by this march of progressivism that anybody trying to draw a line and say, and say no is evil. Yeah. If you want to see how truly evil these people are, is go see one of the very few people who have decided to detransition and go see how they are treated by this community. They are treated like lepers, pariahs. They are no the, worse. It's like when you, uh, it, it's like Islam. When you, uh, what are you? You're a apostate. Uh, apostate yeah. yeah, you're an apostate at that point. Holy Lord. But yeah, now go ahead and we'll. Play the next video and then we'll try to wrap up. All right. So, do you want, do we want to do both of them or just do you both just of do them? One? Yeah. Okay. Do both of them. We got Miss Alabama up first. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> brings a whole new meaning to roll tie. <laughs> trying to. <laughs> That's like a crimson wave there, baby. Holy cow. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that right there, if you can see the screen, is the new Miss Alabama 2024. And the two or four runner-ups are stunners. Smoke shows. All I can say is this girl must have done some incredible community service or something along those lines because I don't understand why she won. Maybe she is just like the most darling sweetheart ever, but I don't. This seems like a body positivity win thing to me, not a, you know, because she Absolutely. Is. Tell, is there any girl, and I, I, I'm being genuine, is there any girl, is your, does your daughter want to be the Miss Alabama this year, or does she want to be one of the three girls that's surrounding Miss Alabama? What was if that? you could trade places with any of them, who would you trade places with? What was the thing, is like, Everyone says that bo- the body positive movement is bullcrap because all if you everyone ask, says if you Lizzo's ask girl, beautiful, Liz- Lizzo's beautiful. But if you go you if you were to go to a girl who was like in shape and skinny, you go 
you look like Lizzo. You're as beautiful as Lizzo. They would look at you with dagger eyes. Stain. Disgust. What do you mean by that? I mean, you're as beautiful as Lizzo. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what do you mean by that? Isn't she beautiful and stunning? Again, the whole point of these pageants is to merit success and fitness. Fitness. Like, it's, it's what we call beauty standards. Beauty standards exist for a reason. All men, we find a certain type of woman attractive. Same for women. Women have, are, have, I would say, far more intense beauty standards than men do. But the problem is, we're so blinded by the, I mean, what would you even say? Just niceness, the, uh, the body progressive, positivity, yeah, the progressivism, body positivity. So we can't be mean. The whole fact is we can't say the truth. Like I said, it's literally, it's, this is micro, like, untruths. One at a time. It's like, oh, you know, fat people aren't fat. They're, they're just big bone. And then big bone turns into healthy at any size. And then healthy at any size turns into fat people can win beauty contests that clearly have no representation for winning. Same with the whole, like, trans. What was it? Didn't a dude win, like, most beautiful woman of the year yeah, or something yeah. Oh, again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's, Miss Nevada is a man. Yes, that's what it was. It was Miss Nevada. That's what it was. That's what I remember seeing. I was like, good Lord, what are we coming to? Yeah, ladies, you can't even win your own beauty pageants. Good job. You suck at that. Women, I, mean, I mean, the argument can be made. Women are objectively terrible at everything because they can't even win women's pageants. I mean, Caitlyn Jenner was woman of the year. Yeah. Said they can't win any of their sporting events anymore because trans, trans women or, you know, former men or boys are whooping them. At yes. everything. Pageants, sporting events, they are all meant to exonerate success in beauty. Now, I'm not saying this girl is a bad person. But she's not living a healthy lifestyle. Clearly. Said, I, look, most guys should be falling over wanting to get with Miss Alabama. I don't think there's anybody dying to get with Miss Alabama this year. Maybe a select few... Guys who are fans of big gals, but... Chubby chasers. Yeah, chubby chasers, you know. But, uh, seriously, I mean, if you can, just uh, pause it up there whenever it goes back to the, the runners-up. There you go. I mean, they're all right there. Look they at them all. They're hot. Gorgeous. Those are the girls that will not be competing with men, but they have to pretend... I mean, again, maybe she did some phenomenal... Maybe she had a phenomenal talent... And she had some really impressive community service or work. Maybe she is like she's on the verge of curing cancer or something. So I guess there's always that. But it's a beauty pageant. Miss Alabama's a beauty pageant. Like we're changing the standard of what beauty is. It's like, well, I don't think so. So, I mean, I don't think anybody's gonna be lining up to have Miss Twenty Twenty Four Alabama at their <laughs> biker show. That is 100% for sure. And uh, moving on to our last topic before we kind of wrap up is uh, a, it's proof that uh, what, what keeps violence out of a kid's life? A father. A father a figure male, keeps a male violence. Figure. Look, here's the truth. Right, go ahead and play. We'll, we'll come back to it in a minute. All right. News stories begin in such a bad news way. It happened last month here at Southwood High School in Shreveport, Louisiana. This pretty Wait, yes, this is pretty Over the course of three days, Another fight. 23 Another students Southwood arrested for fighting. Massive police response. But strangely, there hasn't been another incident since. Perhaps in part because of this most unusual crisis intervention team. Nobody here has a degree in school counseling. No. No majors in criminal justice. No, no. Your qualifications are? Well, Dad, yeah. we decided the best people who can take care of our kids are who? Are us. So Michael Lafitte started Dads on Duty. We're out doing what we do for our babies. A group of about 40 Southwood dads who now hang out at the school in shifts. Let's go. Today, any negative energy that enters the building has to run a gauntlet of good parenting. What's going on, man? You moving fast. I like that horse. I immediately felt a form of safety. We stopped fighting. People started going to class. How could that be? You ever heard of a look? A look? Dads it's have the power to do that? 
Yes. <laughs> not many people know it, but yes. <laughs> let's go, let's go. But it's not just the firm stares and stern warnings. Let's make it to class, my son. It's also the dad jokes. <laughs> they just make funny jokes like, oh, hey, your suit is untied, but it's really not untied. <laughs> and they hate it. They're so embarrassed by it. <laughs> and it's that perfect mix of tough love and gentle ribbing that dads do so well that has helped transform this school. The school has really just been like, happy and you can feel it which is why the dads plan to keep coming to southwood indefinitely because not everybody mm -hmm. has the father the figure. father figure at home mm -hmm. or a male period mm -hmm. in their life mm -hmm. so yeah. just to be here makes a big difference both boys and that is awesome i mean honestly i almost alone should like keep playing that dennis prager video too it's, it's just yeah. that good but uh but yeah, I mean, that's awesome. Those guys know. I mean, I think the black community has known for a long time what the primary problem is in, in their community. And it is the lack of fathers in the household. Yeah. You know? So, much as we all love women, women can't teach a boy how to learn respect. Uh, yes, here's the thing. At some point, boys stop fearing their moms. Because they know that mom can't hurt them anymore. Like, seriously. I, I, I will just say, I used to have a, we had somebody who used to work here whose kids got up in age and mom would come in and threaten him and the kid just was not afraid of her anymore. Like, cause she'd slap him, hit him, spank him and he'd just walk away and be like, okay, cool. I don't care. Because she can't physically hurt him anymore. She is not, he knows in his head that she is not his physical equal. He's already bigger than she is. A punch, a slap, a hit is not going to really hurt him. And, and mom's really never going to try to really hurt her own kid if they're a good mom. There are moms who would hurt their own kids for sure. But there is no menacing presence anymore. Like dads command respect and authority because they are probably their son's superior for a long time or equal. And even if, even if I thought, I, even if I, I physically know I am, my father is no longer my equal, but you always have that that doubt or that level of respect that you had growing up as a kid where it's like, A, I mean, but at the same time, it's like, dad knows dad could probably still take me, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. they got that old man strength grip that, like, they can, it, they'll literally destroy you, put you down with that. Like, they'll shake your hand and, like, they'll just start squeezing and squeezing and you're down on the ground like, let go of my hand, please. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that, that's that's the thing. Like, they have to have... An authority figure like a dad around and again the other thing too humor is such a powerful disarmor dad humor like again if somebody walks in angry and they want to be mad at the world like a lot of these kids at these schools guess what yeah. somebody tells a dad joke or a dad looks at you and can tell that you're upset or angry and he tells the jokes disarms you 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 still want to be angry but you can't be angry it's like I don't know how many times my dad was able to do that to me. Like, I wanted to be mad. I wanted to be angry. And he just told a joke. And I'm just, and I won't let go, but I can't stop laughing. It's like, I don't want to laugh. I don't want to be happy right now. It's like, it doesn't matter. They've already got you. They won the mental game. Yeah, I forget what his name was. Remember that big guy that came over that was Stewie's friend? That was one of our fraternity brother's friends. Mm -hmm. The really big guy that mm -hmm. used to be the bouncer. Yeah. And uh, that one dude, I'm not going to say names, but... uh got in a fight with somebody at the house and he came outside and was all like mad and he was huffing and puffing. And then he saw that big guy smoking a cigarette and he just pointed at the cigarette and he just looked at him and it was literally, he was like a dad and he just turned around and he goes, what? You want a cigarette? <laughs> he's like, he's like, he just like, just like, how about you use your big boy words? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I have a cigarette? He said, please. He was like, can I have a cigarette, please? Like, it literally like, calm this dude down because this guy is berating him <laughs> like he's just fucked. Yeah, like he's a child, yeah. And, and that's the thing. That's the kind of humor that will bring, again, a lot of these kids, it's especially in, in I mean, there's honor culture everywhere. Don't get me wrong. And it, what I mean by honor culture, it's like the old dueling mentality. Like, you know, guys would challenge each other to duels and kill each other. Mm -hmm. That's what there's a lot of in the black community right now. There's honor culture. It's like, you will not punk me. I will not be punked by you. I will get my revenge. But if they come in hot, ready to go, and someone, and a dad or an authority figure is there, tells them a joke, gets their mind off, it's like, it's not that big of a deal. It ain't no, it, as I said in the army, it ain't that deep. Yep. It ain't that deep. It ain't that deep. Seriously. Nobody cares that much about you. Yeah. <laughs> 
So that's what's amazing about that. That that is cool that those guys go there. They do that. They they spend their free time making sure not only their kids are safe, but other people's kids are safe. And that's what the world needs. It needs people like that to step up and be a bigger part of society. And that's again why we started this channel. Why we have this show. We want to inform you. But we also want you to get involved in the local community and make this make our town and by virtue of making our town a better place, make the world a better place. Amen. So that's about all I've got for you today. Uh, we ran really long today, but again, we didn't have anything work-related, so we're just kind of riffing and goofing today. So that's all we've got for you. This is the Twins with the Owasso Live. This was The Morning Loop. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you too and your friends and family can stay in the loop. God bless y'all. See you later, everybody.